know, that FBI announcement music to the ears of the Clinton team after a weekend of campaigning that included Katy Perry, John Bon Jovi, Beyonce and Jay-Z, plus LeBron James. Trump, meanwhile, pointing to those neck and neck battleground states and his standing room only crowds as proof that he will win. He's now making his closing arguments. Proud to be going it alone. No celebrities necessary. ABC's Tom Yamas in Scranton, where he's witnessing those long lines firsthand. Tonight, Donald Trump with one last battleground blitz, a whirlwind sprint to the finish. Eight states in 24 hours. Trump sounding nothing like an underdog. We're winning Ohio. We're winning Iowa. We're winning, we think, New Hampshire. We're going to do great in New Hampshire. I hear we're winning North Carolina big. I hear. In Florida, long lines of supporters waiting overnight to see him. So we're inside Trump's first event of the day, Sarasota, Florida. Thousands of people here. And some of these Trump supporters have been waiting since 6 p.m. last night to see Trump today. Here's one of them. So why wait so long to see Trump? So I could be here to witness history. How, how can I ever get another chance to witness history like this? Trump himself more fired up than ever with just hours to go. In one day, do you believe this? One day, we are going to win back the White House. I'm going to win. I'm 100% confident that the American people is going to vote uh, Donald Trump. He's going to reach that 270. Uh, evangelicals, people of faith in this country, we're going to rise up together uh, and we're going to make sure that the one candidate that is not for abortion, the one candidate that is, that is for uh, overturning the Johnson Amendment, the one candidate that will choose Supreme Court justices. That the Johnson will, Amendment. The Johnson Putting Amendment. religion back in the public square. Where it belongs. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's one of the where, foundations. Where it's that most is, desperately needed. <laughs> you see the state of our country we're in right now. This is, uh, this is America when you try to take God out of it. ISIS tries to kill us. You bring God back, ISIS dies. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> now, as Americans prepare to cast their votes for the next president, the rest of the world is watching closely. People around the world have shared their thoughts with TRT World to send a message to America. Message to the next president of the US. Please do something about homelessness in the USA. Bring peace to the USA, bring peace to the world. Whoever the next president of the United States is, whether it's Clinton or Trump, it doesn't matter. What matters is that they don't continue Obama's anti-Russian politics. The State Department has advised Russian representatives not to approach voting stations and some state authorities have even threatened them with legal action. That's according to Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova. Initially, it was within legal boundaries. The State Department told us it had banned Russian diplomats from observing the U.S. elections. Then, the authorities of some states went further. They told us that they would consider Russian diplomats coming close to a polling station as a violation of the law and that they would act accordingly, treating them as perpetrators. But over the past weekend, the situation changed dramatically. For example, in Houston, Texas, a car belonging to a Russian diplomat was stopped on the road. He was questioned in an aggressive manner about why Russian diplomats show any interest in the U.S. elections. And he was told to abandon all such interest. And this was not the only case. U.S. security agencies have made several attempts at intimidating Russian diplomats in this manner. Russia has already sent notes of protest to the State Department. But this raises the question of what those FBI agents are doing by monitoring the election process in this way. What do the American authorities want to hide so much that they don't even allow foreign diplomats to approach a polling station? WikiLeaks has been hit by a cyber attack after the whistleblowing group published the second part of those leaked emails from the Democratic National Committee. You may remember the first group released this summer forced DNC Chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz to step down. RT's Polly Boyko brings us the very latest. Well, look, WikiLeaks is continuing to put out damaging information about the Hillary Clinton campaign. And late on Sunday evening, the site published 8,000 new emails relating to the Clinton Foundation. It's fair to assume that Clinton and her team probably aren't thrilled about all this, especially with it being so close to the election. And pretty soon after all this was published, WikiLeaks tweeted that its servers had come under a cyber attack. Julian Assange has claimed repeatedly that 
that given the number of establishment figures that he's angered over the course of his work as the editor of WikiLeaks, his servers and the WikiLeaks website have frequently come under these so-called DOS attacks. If Russia invaded an Eastern European country, how quickly could NATO react? Lieutenant General Ben Hodges is commander of the US Army in Europe. We flew with him on his helicopter to a major international exercise in Poland. 31,000 soldiers are involved from 24 different countries. The opening set piece event is a mass parachute drop over the Polish plains. You know, the airdrop might be American and British and Polish, but the audience is global. Hundreds of journalists here, certainly representing every European country. There is no way Vladimir Putin will miss this. From here, the soldiers will split and march to various points to capture bridges and cross rivers. This is a very deliberate show of strength to a country that right now is enemy number one to NATO, and is only a few hundred miles away from here. Gulf Defense Forces and the US military are continuing their joint military drill, Keen Sword, the first such exercise to take place since Japan's new national security laws were adopted. Part of the exercise is a mock emergency scenario where a US warplane has crashed. Japanese search and rescue helicopters must then locate survivors. The exercises, taking place in waters around the island of Ikubaru of Okinawa Prefecture, run until Wednesday. Keen Sword involves over 25,000 Japanese troops and more than 11,000 military personnel from the United States. The development of pro artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. China cementing an iron grip on its internet Monday, adopting a new controversial cybersecurity law. The rules require tech firms to store important data on servers in China and provide, quote, technical support for Chinese security agencies. Officials say it's meant to fight growing threats like hacking and terrorism. I think the big issue is that the wording of the law is incredibly vague. Um, so that's what very, um, business groups are worried about and rights groups as well is that not so much what will immediately happen but what could potentially happen in the future. One of the things people are particularly worried about is that under this law they could potentially have access to encryption keys, they could potentially require companies to make a backdoor in their software which would give them access. The law itself criminalizes pretty much anything that works against, I think the quote they used was national unity. Turkey temporarily pulled the plug on a children's cartoon channel. The country has been cracking down on channels seen as part of separatist activity. The channel aired popular cartoons like Spongebob, just dubbed into the Kurdish language. After being off air for weeks, Turkey has reversed its decision, but Zarek TV wasn't the only victim. It's a part of Turkey's emergency crackdown against terrorism after the coup. 
Kurds say the crackdown has unfairly targeted their culture and language. There is no operation or banning against a language or culture because there are many Kurdish channels and they continue broadcasting. Up until two decades ago, the Kurdish language was banned in Turkey. It was eventually unbanned in 1991 and broadcasts were allowed in the early 2000s, but relations haven't really improved. Aves muertas se encontraron esparcidas por varios metros de la arena en el segundo rompeolas de la playa de Salaberry. Algunos hombres de mar manifestaron que esto es por la falta de lemenas o también llamados patillo. Están esparcidas a lo largo de 100 metros en la arena y son devorados por los... This is the absolute worst news you will hear today. Both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are preparing for the election to go into overtime. As in our collective national nightmare, this election might not be over as soon as we all desperately want. If you believe any of the polls, the election is gonna be neck and neck. It's gonna be close enough for either of the candidates to lose. Camp Clinton is assembling a voter protection program filled with thousands of lawyers who are going to be working to watch over the election in battleground states. Camp Trump has the Republican National Lawyers Association doing the same thing on the other side. And a losing candidate can ask for a recount in 43 states. If there is any chance at all that the electoral college outcome is in doubt, that probably could happen. And if you believe the polls, it will be that close of a call. Which is why I pray for a sweeping landslide. Uh, time and time again how loyal dogs are. Well, there is no dog more loyal than one in Detroit who waited for weeks for his owners to return after they were evicted from their home. This is Boo. When his family was kicked out of their home, they left Boo behind. But even though they forgot about Boo, he didn't forget about them. He laid down alone on a mattress next to a pile of trash for about a month, waiting for them to come home. Neighbors fed Boo, spread the word on social media, hoping someone would come and get him. Neighbors say the family did return briefly. They came back one time, took the belongings that they chose to keep. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't Boo. Dogs are the most loyal. If we could get humans to be, you know, anywhere close to that level of compassion, then we'd have a much better world. Now that's Mike Diesel of the Detroit Youth and Dog Rescue. He's helping give Boo a new lease on life. Veterinarians say he is thriving right now. Boo will receive medical care for about a month. And after that, the rescue group will look to find a foster home for him to live in. That is one of the most heartbreaking pictures most I've seen. Is. That dog laying faithfully for a month. For a month. Uh, 